G'day everyone, welcome back. I hope you've all had a terrific uh, last few days. It is episode five, Sue Gordian's Gordy's Gas Bags back, courtesy just moved the Corona bottle a little further away today because like a lot of people out there, it has become my best friend over the last couple of weeks. Anywho, uh, absolutely thrilled to have this champion join us today. None other than Eloise Southby, folks. Big round of applause. Eloise! Hi! How are you going? Thanks for having me on. I've been an avid fan, so I feel very, very honoured to be here. Hey. (laughs) Now, did you have to go to the attic to find that gear or is it hanging up front and centre in your wardrobe? Well, actually, this is, this is a story behind this. This was found in an op shop. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and Jenny Dole, who is one of our volunteers, has volunteered for many years with Netball Australia and Netball Victoria, came to me and said, could you please get this signed? And... Actually, now that we're in ISO, I can't do that. But I have mine upstairs, but it was just on the bench. And I was like, I'm going to actually put that on and wear it with pride. My old Phoenix days, loved it. But obviously can't forget the Vixens now. So I'll put that on my head. Oh, you're, you're a true blue passionate Victorian, aren't you? Through and through. Oh, I am. And now I'm getting really hot. So I'm just going to take that off. <laughs> there we go. There's my hair. Um, yes, I'm very passionate for Victoria and still in the coaching pathway. So I love it. And um, yeah, I don't think the blue blue blood runs through my veins. That's for sure. Mate, I, uh, I want to, so, so for people that are enjoying all these, they're all like, oh, it's like the old girls. And I feel like every time I've spoken to someone, there's been a characteristic either of the person or their game that's really stood out. And when I was thinking about, it, I'd love to give you a buzz and, and catch up with you and have a chat. I honestly believe that you were um, the player of the top. You were the first player that really um, started to show emotion and passion in a game. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, when we watch all those clips yeah. of the AFL and you see the players doing this or they're slamming their hands. I just remember when you were in your heyday playing, you were the one that shoot a goal and the camera would zoom on you and you would be so pumped up. It was unbelievable. Yeah, come on. I did it before Leighton, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, yeah, I would say that's true. And I actually, interestingly enough, when I was coming through as a 16-year-old and very lucky to have played with the Melbourne Netball Club and get me under Norma Plummer and been given a, an opportunity as a really young player, which you don't see much these days, so I feel very blessed with that. Um, but it was sort of tried to be hammered out of me that you can't, you can't be saying things to umpires and you can't be saying that and you can't be doing this. And I was like, but why? Like, that's who I am and that's how I play. And it also, the supporters love watching that, a bit of, you know, giving a bit of yourself and they see that emotion and passion. Um, It really helps myself, but it helps my teammates and the spectators. So, I don't know, I can remember being young and them telling me not to say things and not answer back to umpires. And I think Maureen Boyle, who was an umpire, um, was fabulous. She's from New South Wales and she always used to say when I go, come on, Maureen, why'd you call me for that? And she'd look at me and she'd go, you know you did that, Eloise. And I was like, <laughs> oh, okay, be quiet. Um, but, yeah, so I think I did play with a lot of passion and I think it just helped my game immensely when I was like that and fired up. So I loved it. Yeah, no, I, look, I, I certainly love it and everyone knows, you know, in Suncorp Super Netball now, we're desperately wanting the characters to shine. So you would have been in your absolute element if your era <laughs> had have been had have been today. It would have been quite extraordinary. Hey, um, are you you're di- are you diamond number one two zero? Is that correct? I am. I'm number yeah. one twenty. Yeah, one twenty, which is an absolute honour. But I want to take you back before diamonds time to you know the world of the Melbourne Phoenix. So we go back to the Commonwealth Bank Trophy, um, or even to the Mobile League. I think just yeah. prior to that, but um, what an era it was for the Melbourne Phoenix. You were blessed, uh, I guess, to play alongside some of the greats, and I say in Sherelle McMahon, um, of course, Liz Boniello, or Liz Tavener as she was, Janine Illich, uh, Susan Meany, Pete Kennedy was in there. It was such, I mean, and I'm, I'm leaving out a lot of people here, and I don't mean to be rude, but gee, it was a really solid team, and you were bloody good mates, weren't you? You were a really tight group of mates 
We were. And like even before that, my first couple of years with the Melbourne Pumas, which then became um, the Melbourne Phoenix, like the, my captains were Simone McInnes and uh, Rosalie Jenke. So you can't forget, I probably learned so much more from those two people, like being the real elder statesmen of the team, and they would hate me saying that because they love to think that they're my age. Uh, <laughs> and, um, and then for me to come in as a 16 year old, learn from them just about how hard you have to train, you don't muck around, you come here, it's business. We walk out with our shoulders like held back and we're like, we're out there to win. Every time you stepped on that court, you were there to win. And I learned that from those two, um, very much so. And then, yeah, as you said, all those players that you just spoke about are really some of my very best friends. And you throw into the mix even Bianca Chatfield, Natasha Chocolate, yeah. Joe Curry. Um, there was just this whole group and we were, we've all remained very close. Um, we would do anything for each other. I mean, three of them were my bridesmaids with you throwing good dick in there. So, Look, I, you know, it was just an amazing group of players to play with and how lucky was I to stand in a circle with Sherelle McMahon, one of the best that's ever played the game. I mean, it made me well, look bloody good. Okay, all right. Well, let, let's get serious because, as you say, yes, Sherazzle Dazzle dazzled our screen <laughs> for a very long time. And she, I might have to give her an opportunity to come on Gordy's Gas Tank <laughs> so that she can respond to this. But I'm going to throw you under the bus here, <laughs> Ella. Uh, <laughs> Who had the smarts between the two of you inside the circle? <laughs> well, many people would say that it was me, but Shazza and I, we just had a connection. So I remember Plum coming to me and saying, Norma Plummer, saying, Elle, I've got this young kid. And I was probably only a year older, but I'd been under Norma for 12, 18 months, two years. And she taught me a lot about the game. So it was plumber smart, really. And then she's got, I've got this kid. She's so bloody quick. You know, you're going to have to learn to throw without looking. And then, and then. so literally, I think Norma was kind of canvassing the fact that I had to pick up all these skills before Shaz was right to come in. And then as soon as she came in, it sort of just gelled. Um, and funnily enough, Sherelle and I are like our, our aunt, um, grandma's a second cousin. So there's this family connection there as well. So it's all really quite bizarre. Um, and, yeah, it just worked. It, it gelled and, you know, look, Sherelle was such a competitor. Like, you know, she would have done, she would have killed anyone on that court. Like she just had to win uh, at all costs. And we saw that in her game, but such a talented player. Like, she could do things. There was nothing I couldn't do. I mean, I could set a good screen, Gordy, but <laughs> I can tell you. <laughs> that, was my next, that was my next question. How good were you at setting screens? <laughs> well, I had to because she was so bloody quick. I was like, I just got to get in the way here. So, um, Plummer had that all lined up before we kind of formed this combination and uh, it just worked. And look, more to the point, we really enjoyed playing together and there were some times in the games where we would just look at each other and go, come on, we've got to get this next one. Or, hey, I haven't shot a lot of goals. Can you like, we'll palm them off? And, you know, like we would just coordinate stuff like that and it just worked a treat. Yeah, what a, what a blessing to... I mean, I, I imagine, do you look back on your netball journey and say maybe one of the great highlights was that Sherelle and I were able to f be a goaling duo that will remem be remembered through time? Yeah, look, I think, um, you know, certainly in the Commonwealth Bank Trophy, yeah, we just, it was so good to play with her week in, week out and work on new things. And like some of the things that I would watch her do being right next to her, I would be like, how did I just do that? Like <laughs> she was phenomenal. Like her aerial ability to get off the ground, like a single step and her speed off the mark, I have never, I just knew she was off and she would beat anyone. She'd leave everyone for dead. So easy, easy to pass into that sometimes. And what about your journey into the into the diamonds? So, like, I mean, like anyone, you know, you get handed, you know, the, the green and gold dress. I mean, what an incredible time. Again, some of the names that you, you – or the players that you played alongside through that time. But talk, talk to me about a highlight of your time playing for Australia. Um, well, look, you know, my first ever selection was in 1998. So – um, and I actually was in the team, like, with my idol, Vicky Wilson. So yeah. I grew up wanting to be Vicky and having posters on my wall of Vicky. And I went to the 91 World Champs and I sat in the back row of the Sydney Entertainment Centre and watched Australia and Bobby Hawks going crazy and I was going crazy. 
And mum and mum and dad and family friends and my sister came out the back of the entertainment centre and the Aussie bus was coming out and all the girls, it was Shelley O'Donnell and, and I've yelled out, I love you, Vicky Wilson. <laughs> you know, I was 14 at the time, mind you. So cute. And then when you think about that, so from 14 to then 21, I'm played alongside in my first ever match in Jamaica alongside her at Goal Attack. So I just couldn't, like, I just couldn't believe it actually at the time. Yeah. I was like, I know. I, look, it took me a long time to make the team. I think I was in the squad five years. Um, it was five hard years. There were so many good players. And I knew what, where I sat. I, like, I honestly knew there was, you know, so many good goalers. It was Jenny Borlase, Vicky Wilson, who they were the two I was probably up against as shooters. Um, and then it was Nick Cusack, um, Katrina Wag at the time. So there was just a whole lot. And then we had Coxie and Jackie Delaney and all yeah. these people coming in at the one time and Shaz and myself. So there was just heaps of people that were coming through. So you had to bide your time a lot in those days and lots of hard work. But, yeah, when you first get the call to say, or the, we had the note under the door, actually, yeah. um, that we were in the team. Oh, hi, Finny. One of my sons coming downstairs. Um, it was, you know, a very special time when you think of there's a million netballers that play every week in this country and probably even more so now. So it's pretty True. amazing. True. Um, did you expect to go on to be uh, in the world of coaching? <sighs> yeah. Oh, did you? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> really? I don't know. Yeah, I've always enjoyed it. Um, I'm not sure if I want to be a career coach, but I enjoy, like, particularly those assistant coach role, roles. I really love um, what I can give back to. I'm very passionate, as I know, a passionate Victorian, yeah. um, passionate in um, how I want kids to really love the game and want to be able to go on and succeed and do well. I'm not sure I want to be that as my career, but I do definitely want, want to be involved in some capacity and be able to pass on some of the things that I've learnt and, um, you know, some great mentors coached me that gave me so much in my life. And I think, yeah, I think to be able to do that. And I look, I coach at the Maribyrnong Sports Academy in Melbourne. So I do a lot of coaching in that school level. And um, I work with the Victorian Fury as the assistant coach under Di Honey, Di Atkinson. So look, you know, they are, they are little bits and pieces that I really enjoy and get my sort of netball fix out of, um, which is good. Do you look at Suncorp Super Netball now and wish maybe that you were playing now? Like, do you ever? Yes. I, I, often, <laughs> yeah, I often wonder whether players kind of look and, I mean, beyond the fact that the pay is there and everything, but just to look at the spectacle that is, you know, yeah. the world's best netball competition, do you wish you were there? Uh, look, I think it's magnificent. And I was part of the Players Association when we kind of pushed to kind of get things up and running and, um it, it, yeah, I think it's remarkable where we've got this league now. And, you know, do I wish I was doing all that training? Maybe when I was younger, but certainly when I look at what they do now and their loads, I'm like, whoa. Um, but I think that they're athletes. They can do this as a, a job. They can play on this world stage and just be magnificent at what they do. And, you know, we've got the crowd supporting us and TV. So I think all of that is just amazing. If you, if you were playing, Ella, if you were in a team out of the current SSN players, which goal attack would you pick to have out the front of you? Gretel. Gretel's if it. Gone. Yeah. You two would be like two tall, powerful towers. That would be insane. Unstoppable. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'd have to probably work a little bit harder, but... Um... I just love Gretel's game, actually. I, you know, I, I probably would have had to be like her now, like in terms of running goal attack. I'm not this tall. Like I'm only six foot two. So I would have had to run goal attack. I loved doing the layouts, all that when I played. So I think I watch her and I go, oh, I've always said, I used to say to Lisa Alexander, I'd love to coach her. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. She's insane. <laughs> here's, one of my, here's one of my children with her. Say hi. hi. This is Angus. He's, he's having a little like, like lazy little rest behind me here. Well, well let's talk oh, no. about that. Let's go to let's go to the COVID. Oh, state. Oh, oh. Lucy, hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's a bit of a lot of kids. Hey, yeah. Uh, don't work with kids or animals. Remember we've said yeah. that. <laughs> That's right. Let's talk COVID nineteen. Yeah. You've got um, you've got four in the household. Four kids in the household that. Uh, 
you're managing through different uh, days of the week and so on and so forth. How are you coping? Um, I'll get it in a sec. He's asking for paper, um, which is good. He must be doing some work, which is great. Um, I don't know where it is. You'll have to check in the kitchen somewhere. Thanks, Joel. Um, so well, how am I managed? I don't life is tough. Um, four kids. So I have a stepdaughter, Millie, my sons, Finn and Angus, from my first ma marriage. So he, grade five and grade four. And then I have a toddler, James. Um, to Nick, my husband, and he's three. So he's probably the hardest because, you know, particularly with the homeschooling, which we kind of trialed a little bit before the school holidays, but we'll go back next week to that. And trying yep. to keep the toddler away while they kept concentrating, that was, look, I don't know how I'm going to go. And I'm probably going to say to the teachers, look, if I get a couple of hours out of them each day, you've probably got to say that's a good job because <laughs> it's really going to be hard mentally for people to cope with that, really. I think that's about um, 90 minutes more than I'd get out of them. Oh, it's so hard. Um, but anyway, I, the thing, I, and I was talking to you about this before, is you're never going to get this time back with your kids. So it's stressful at times, but I think I'm certainly coming from the point now of, oh, well, the house isn't going to be perfect. Um, there's going to be crap absolutely everywhere because there's kids everywhere. Um, but how nice it is to slow down for once and not be travelling or working out at night with netball or working during the day with my other jobs. So just spend it with them. If it means like we make a mess and we're drawing everywhere and there's paint on the floor, well, so be it. Let's just do it and try and get through it the best we can. Well, with your beautiful cream walls in the background, I'm hoping mm. there's no painting going on on those. Uh, not in this stage, but there's going to be a few <laughs> pictures put up. That's a job that I've got. See, have a look here. Oh, there's one. Best day ever. Oh. There's a bit of a, there's another big painting. Coming. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> it's got to go up. They're jobs that I haven't done for the last right. couple of years. Well, you, this is interesting. Are you the one with the drill? Do you get the drill out? Yeah, I just buy those ones that you stick oh. on the back that don't mark the walls <laughs> and hope like hell it doesn't fall down. Oh. <laughs> I love a moment with a drill. Hey, I had the drill out. No. I'm just drilling holes in the wall for the sake of it. That's, that's, that's how I always think, eh? Oh, God, no. Hey, but, um, like, I have, we have got through a lot of things, a lot of gardening. We've planted a veggie garden. We've done the cleaning. We've done uh, – so I'm just trying to now go, let's just do one veggie patch one day and the next one the next because it's going to be – we're in for the long haul, everyone. Oh, oh, no, we are. I oh, know. I don't even want to think about it. That means I've got to do no. a lot of these gaudy gas bags. But anyhow, <laughs> hey, um, Ella, I'd, I'd love to, as always, we'd love to chat forever in a day, but um, it does come to an end. The end being that I have to ask you about whether you've got a go-to karaoke song. Well, I have at the moment because I'm absolutely stuck with my children. But you're gonna, everyone's going to be annoyed with the one I pick oh. because it's it goes like this, Gordy. Baby shark, do 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 do. Baby shark, do 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 do. Baby shark, do 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 do. Baby shark. Oh. Mommy shark, do 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 do. Mommy shark, do 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 do. Mommy shark, do 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 do. Mommy shark. That's enough. Oh, that song gives me the shits. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it'll give me the shits when I have to record, uh, edit this and play around with it. Whoever invented that song. I don't All know. The out there where turn away needs this. That's what I say. Yeah. Unbelievable. It's pretty bad. I know. So it's bad. terrible. Well, Ella, unreal. It's been great catching up um, and, and seeing your face because I know that we kind of, we all sort of gas bag a little bit here and there on social media, but we don't have these moments to catch up. So uh, all the very best to you during the COVID-19, the four kids, um, the opening of the fridge too many times a day and the occasional <laughs> one of those too many. Yeah, just to get you through. <laughs> but um, really good to catch up, mate, and all the very best Thank you. to you going forward. Love your show, Gordy. Keep it up. Thanks, no worries. Thanks, everyone.